Hey everyone, and welcome to My Coding Crib. Let's go. Come on. All right, so today I'm going to be talking to you about what it's like to be a full-time engineer. As someone who worked as a full-time electrical engineer, I have a lot of experience about what it's like um, working in the industry versus engineering school and also versus being an entrepreneur that does engineering work. So let's get this video started. Let's go ahead and get started with the first question. So is full-time engineering work like engineering school? No, it's not, honestly. Um, my expectations for working as a full-time engineer were very high when I was in engineering school. And then when I actually got <laughs> into my full-time job, I was really disappointed. And I think the thing that um, on my first day of work, uh, I expected them to, you know, kind of give me like a project that I would be in charge of, that I would design from scratch. And what actually happened on the first day of work was that they said, hey, you can spend your first week here just exploring the company's website. I thought, why are you paying me this huge salary if you're asking me to look through and learn how to use a website. So yeah, I was a little disappointed working full time. Uh, I didn't learn as fast as I did in engineering school. In engineering school, you know, you always have to keep up with the newest stuff in your classes. And every single semester you start over and learn a bunch of new things versus working full time. You're going to be working on one project for maybe six months to a year, depending on the project. Um, really depends on the company because uh, different companies have different project sizes and, and time links. So that's really dependent on the company that you work for. Um, but also you're not going to be designing a full system on your own. You're going to be working on a tiny part of a system. And for me, my favorite thing about engineering school was learning how everything worked in a system and basically being able to build something from scratch that I could have ownership of. And in the industry, you don't really have that until you've worked, you know, three to five years and they trust you enough to start working on your own projects and, and give you the responsibility to design projects on your own. All right, let's move on to the second question. Will I use my degree in my full-time engineering job? That's a maybe. Honestly, I used maybe 10% of my degree when I worked full-time. So when I was working full-time, I actually had to learn a lot of stuff that I didn't even know about and didn't learn in engineering school. An example of that would be like how to code firmware. Um, that's something that I didn't even touch in engineering school, yet that was what the first project that they put me on. And so what happens in that situation is that usually a company will send their younger entry level engineers to trainings that are specific to whatever you need to learn. So even if you're on a project that you don't know anything about uh, or you didn't learn about the subject in engineering school, most likely they're going to send you to some type of professional training where other engineers that are experts in whatever you're working on uh, will teach you everything that you need to know. All right, the next question is, what is the hardest part of working full time? I would say the hardest part of working full time is that the flexibility is limited. In college, when you're in engineering school, you have the choice to go to class or to not go to class. Um, no one's forcing you to do anything. It's really just up to you to get whatever you need to do done. When you're working a full-time job, they expect you to be there during a certain time period. So my company that I worked for had flex hours, which means that I had to get to work any time between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. and I couldn't leave work uh, until after 3 p.m. So of course I took that as I'm gonna get there at 6 a.m. and leave at 3 p.m. Um, because that's just the schedule that I liked the most and gave me the most flexibility in my life. To me, I just really want the ultimate flexibility. And so that's something that was really hard for me to deal with is, is someone else kind of controlling my life. And since work is such a huge part of your life, you know, you want to make sure that it's something that you're happy with and that it works with your schedule. So for me personally, that was the hardest part of working full time. All right, next question. What's a typical day of a full time engineer? So like I said, um, you're gonna be working probably eight hours a day, maybe nine hours a day. And most likely you'll come to work in the morning and check all of your emails. When you're working full time, 
you're going to have a lot of emails that you need to keep up with and just basically people messaging you on your team and contacting your mentors, all of those different things. So the first thing that you're going to do when you get to work is check your emails and reply to everything that you need to reply to. The next thing is you're probably going to jump straight into working on whatever project you're assigned. Now the thing about working on projects in in like the full-time engineering setting is that there is a lot of distractions so people can always like come up to your desk and ask you a question they can talk to you about random things that may have nothing to do with work um, you could have a, an urgent email pop up and you're, you're pulled away from what you're working on to go work on something else especially as you get past your first year uh, as working as a full-time engineer they're going to start putting more work on you and putting you on more projects. So you might be working on multiple projects at the same time. Your day is going to consist of, you know, balancing, working on multiple projects and trying to stay as focused as possible um, while at the same time uh, keeping, you know, the communication line open between you and your team and, and uh, replying to the emails that you need to reply to. So that's basically a description of a full-time engineering job right there. Okay, the last question is, what are my best and worst memories of working as a full-time engineer? So we'll start with the best. And I think my best memory is being able to hang out with my very first mentor. Uh, my first mentor was actually a female electrical engineer, um, which is very rare because one, electrical engineers are very scarce to begin with compared to like mechanical engineers. Um, but also a female electrical engineer is also very rare. And so the mentor that I had, she was so awesome and, and smart and driven kind of like me. And so she was kind of like the engineer that I wanted to be in a few years. So it was really nice, um, being able to talk with her and work on her projects, um, and let her mentor me. So I think those were my best memories from working full time. Okay, before I tell you my worst memory, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a backstory so that you understand it. So one thing about the company that I worked for was they had an extremely high turnover rate in the last six months that I worked there. And if you don't know what a turnover rate is, it means like how many engineers are quitting. Um, and resigning because usually uh, an engineer does not just resign after one year if they're doing that then there's something wrong with the company because usually engineers will stay there for you know three to five years uh, to get good experience before moving on to another company um, but we had a lot of engineers that were quitting after their very first year including me <laughs> So every time an engineer would quit, they would just take the work that that engineer was doing, which was full time, you know, a full time engineer's worth of work and delegate it to the other engineers on the team. So I got to a point where I was so stacked with work that really an engineer one shouldn't have been doing anyway. It really, you know, they were putting like work that normally a, a higher level engineer would do and passing it on to the engineer ones just because we were so short staffed and we had all of these huge deadlines coming up. And so I remember the worst memory was one time my manager was trying to get this uh, these tasks, all this code that I had to write for this project I was working on. He was trying to get it delegated to a software developer so that I wouldn't have to do that and I could focus on my main, you know, the, my main part in that project. Um, but he came up to my desk and said, hey, we can't find another person to do this. You're going to have to do this uh, next month. And that really hit me hard because I realized that I had so much work that there was no way that I was going to be able to finish all of that stuff um, before the deadlines. And it kind of hit me that it's like, really they're setting me up to fail as like an engineer one. And I think that that's the worst time to make an engineer feel like that is when they're just starting out. And so I kind of had a moment um, after my manager walked away, I just kind of started tearing up because I thought like, I can't do this. Like I literally cannot do this. I will fail. And then that's going to make me look bad and not, you know, make me not get promoted when I should all of these different things just because they were so understaffed. And then the senior engineer that sat next to me, like he was like, Lily, what's wrong? You know? And then after that, I just, I just broke down. I started crying at work and I felt kind of embarrassed because it's like, who cries at work? But uh, me and that senior engineer went to a conference room and I just kind of like vented to him and, and told him like everything that was going on and everything that was stressing me out. And it was just like, after that meeting, I realized that I wanted to resign and just not, you know, I couldn't take any more of the stress from that full-time job. 
So that was kind of my worst memory, but it was also an eye opener for like, it's time to quit. Uh, because you could keep on working, at, you know, and working and just getting that paycheck because that steady paycheck is very nice, but um, it's really hard to walk away from that. But this particular memory really kind of made me start taking the steps that I needed to to resign and get out of that unhealthy mental environment for me, which was the full time job. Um, this was just my personal experience. Maybe your experience at a better company would be better. Um, but my number one tip for you is to make sure before you accept any job offer is to ask them about their turnover rate and basically ask them how, what kind of work they're expecting out of you. How many hours are they expecting out of you? See, when at my company, uh, towards the end of it, they were expecting all the engineers to work 50 to 60 hours a week. And, and for me, that was just not going to work. Like I didn't want to work any more than 40 hours. So those are things that you need to hammer out before you even accept a job offer. So that's my tip for you. Don't make the same mistakes that I did. And I really hope this video helps you um, get the best job that you can get or maybe leave a job that you don't like. Um, so thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, give this a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on so you never miss a video. Can't wait to see you next time.